ways to show you guys like how exactly I haven't grown up like specific ways and I thought hey my creative process is a pretty good example of that like I think it's pretty eccentric so without further ado I will show you my creative process so step one I actively seek out inspiration in the form of comics, video games, TV shows, anything under the sun, and even beyond. I don't believe that inspiration just hits you while you're sitting down doing nothing. I really believe that you should really immerse yourself in the things that inspire you. And you shouldn't just wait for it to come to you. So after you immerse yourself, you have to absorb the energy you get from that inspiration. So step two, this is where it gets weird. I concentrate really hard to astral project myself from my body. Doing this freezes my physical body completely, allowing the energy to just stay there. And I can easily collect it that way. So, step three, I shrink my astral projection to a size no bigger than a fly. In case you haven't figured it out yet, what I'm getting at is that I'm going to go travel inside my body and get that inspiration I just collected firsthand. Step three, I use my ear as an entry point. Now, I like using my ear as an entry point because I keep them clean and it's not so hard to make my way around through it. I tried using my nostrils once and it was messy, so I decided to stick to this. So step four, this is when my expedition begins. I travel through all sorts of terrain inside my ear and it twists and changes each time I enter my body, actually, but it's always a rewarding check, so it's fine. So, step six, I reach my destination, my brain. So, since I froze my body in time before entering it, um, all the energy that I collected is now there. It's ripe for the picking, and to do that, I use these special bags, these inspiration-type material bags there. I use them to collect the energy that my brain has. So there. I collect the energy and then I leave my brain and then I grow back to my original size. The bags grow alongside me. And then I proceed to re-enter my body and infuse my hand and my two eyeballs with the energy I just collected. So this is super important so I know exactly what to draw when I start the drawing process. Um, so the next step is that um, if it's successful, I will feel a burning sensation in my eyes. And then the last step is that I get to work. So as you can see, I go through quite a lot just to get to work on a single project or illustration, but actually I just wish it was as fun as how I just said it. This is how my real process looks like. It's, this is the real top secret stuff. But I, I told it to you guys that way way I said it because I really feel that it's imperative for you to start thinking like a kid before your creative process even starts all the way to your finished product so yeah think like a kid so where did being immature take me well it's taken me to a lot of places and positions I never thought I'd find myself in at age 20 so you know I think I'm onto something here this is just the way I found that works so, the man responsible for a certain cat in the hat's existence once said that adults are like obsolete children, and I think there's a bit of truth to that. I think transitioning into adulthood is pretty intimidating for a lot of kids today, because I think society kind of paints a pretty weird picture of how that's supposed to work. So, to understand why, let us paint a picture of what society tells us adulthood is like. So adulthood, there is work. You have to get a job to make a living. There are bills because your parents won't be around to pay for anything anymore. There are taxes, you can't escape that. Um, you can go into debt. And there are miscellaneous expenses that you'll have to deal with. So all of this sort of amounts to stress. And yeah. But I don't think we should be thinking about adulthood like this. Like, it's not a pretty place to imagine our young selves in, isn't it? So a lot of us are scared of the idea of growing up. But why should we be? Why not see it as an experience to better ourselves as people? 
without having to compromise the childhood sense of adventure that we're so familiar with. So what we need to do is we need to redefine what it means to grow up. So I recently came across the work of a German philosopher named Susan Nyman, who wrote this very excellent book called Why Grow Up. And in this book, she talks about how we've been so conditioned by society to think about growing up in milestones. There's, we graduate, we get married, we start a family, so on and so forth. But I don't think we should be thinking about growing up in terms of in terms of fixed points of achievement. So, because that's giving in, and growing up is not always giving in. And giving is not growing up either. So, what is growing up all about, really? Um, so, to discuss what growing up is, or what I've found growing up to be, we're going to discuss, I've prepared a Venn diagram here. We're going to discuss some traits that we think are specific to adulthood and traits that, we're that we think are specific to childhood. And then we're going to see, we're going to figure out the way that works. So, traits commonly associated with adulthood. Um, adults are independent. They're very wise, knowledgeable people. They're critical and rational thinkers. They're lethargic, kind of boring, pretty jaded about life. And they're stuck in a routine. Now, um, on the other hand, childhood. Kids are pretty clueless people. We're dependent, especially on our parents and our peers. We're blindly shaped by surroundings. Pretty excitable little creatures, energetic also. And we have a sense of adventure. So, what I figured out, what I found out is that um, to be the best person you can be, you take some traits from adulthood, the independence, the wisdom, the critical and rational thinking, but you also have to retain some of your traits from childhood. So you have to be excitable, you have to be energetic, and you have to always have that sense of adventure. So Susan Nyman talks about growing up as a balancing act, in which we have to somehow become the wonderful, fun-loving, but mature product of a rational selection of traits from adulthood and childhood. So if we think about growing up in this way, nobody truly is grown up at any point in time. Because we're all works in progress. We're all constantly growing up. So using everything we've discussed, let's paint another picture of what an adult should be. So adulthood, happy person. So you can't escape the things that I previously mentioned. These are all going to be here. But you can change the way you look at these things. You can be a critical thinker. You have to always be curious. You always have to keep that childlike energy with you. And you always have to always look for adventure in everything you do. So it's really all a matter of perspective. So go grow up. Go, go about adulthood, get a job, graduate, all those things. But always promise yourself that you'll be the best kid that you can be. Thank you.